What's up gamers and collectors, DGC back with another video, finally. Where the hell you been, Alex? Um, well, <clears throat> as you can see, the shelves are empty. I'm moving soon, so we're kind of in a little bit of a transition period. Uh, we're gonna be doing pickups here, but in a second, we'll do that. Um, so my current living situation is just not working out for me, and um, it really impacted the channel, not that like, the channel's my life or anything, clearly, because I don't make videos all the time, but I really enjoy doing it. I've made a lot of great friends, great trades, gotten stuff from friends for free, and you know, it's just, it's it's a great community that we're in, it's great fun, um, we all share the same passion, whether you like Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, Atari, Sega, weird shit like the Coleco, and you know, we all, we, we're all just into the, the hobby of gaming and collecting, and it's just really been a great blast, and sorry for the lack of content, it's just, life's been uh, pretty hectic for me, so I also need to get a new car, because my car's a piece of shit, so... Yeah, life's just been kind of crazy for me. Um, but I'm making great strides on the whole front of just getting all this stuff uh, situated. Um, but yeah, so I'll be moving in March, and uh, I guess the channel will go back to normal. Probably full swing mid-April, I guess would be my guess. Uh, maybe sooner, maybe afterwards, I don't know. Um, I will tell you, though, that... Uh, I'm going to have gigabyte internet, so that's going to be sweet, so that means probably a lot more streaming, um, and definitely just better all around for uploads and downloads and all sorts of good stuff for the channel, so I'm definitely excited about that. It's in a nice quiet neighborhood, there's no noises, um, it's literally, it's almost kind of like eerily quiet, which is awesome, because that's going to be great for sleeping purposes and recording purposes and just overall a better quality of life for me, because... Um, not going to go into super details about it, but the last year and a half of my current place of living has just not been great. And for anybody that's like sub 400 subs for me and like beyond that, um, you've been with the channel long enough to know that I used to crank videos out two, three, four times a week because I just enjoy doing this. Uh, I love talking about the games and just everything there is about gaming, whether it be, you know, my top tens and and hidden gems and just you know shmup ps4 collection and just all sorts of different shit i just i just love doing it i love talking about it and i just love interacting with you guys um made a great stride i'm, I'm damn near at 1300 subs which is really amazing um very grateful for that didn't have to cheat to get to that amount of subs and that's the thing i'm most proud about um, it's not the biggest number, but I know that all 1,300 of those people are real people who enjoy watching me and my content. So that's really, uh, that's really special. And for anybody that, you know, anybody under like 10,000 subs, you know, even 10,000 is not a huge number, but like if, and, and this is what I always tell to my other YouTuber buddies who are like, uh, not depressed, but sad or, uh, you know, some, some word along those lines about their number. It's just a number, but if you think about it, so let's just say you had 50 subs, right? You've got, and you, let's say you're in a room with your 50 subs. That's 50 people that like you and like what you talk about and like the way you present it and, and this and that. So hopefully that'll encourage some people that, you know, are maybe feeling down about their number. Because um, there's definitely been multiple times, and I've bitched about it on my own channel many times about my number. But at 1,300, I mean, if I think about that, like if I were to meet all 1,300 of you, which would be cool, um, that's an inst like that's a lot of fucking people. Like, that's crazy to think about. It really is. So for anybody that, whatever your number is, like, just be proud of it. Own it. Uh, those are, that amount of people enjoy watching you and what you do. So just keep that in mind. Um, and the reason I kind of bring that up is um, I've, I've been watching a, a, quite a few people are leaving YouTube. And uh, it really sucks because some of them are personal friends of mine who I have good connections with now. And I've met some of these people in real life. And I've really grown to know them over the last two and a half years since I've been doing this and um, it, it sucks to see it happen but life gets in the way kids parenting a homeowner what have you all that shit gets in the way of YouTube but um, just go into it knowing that it's a hobby that's what I'm trying to do from now on um, so you know content may never be back to where it was when I just had willy-nilly free time to do all this whenever I wanted to but all right enough rambling about that stuff just wanted to give a little update on um, kind of where my life's at, what's going on, and why I haven't been making content. But let's jump into some pickups here. So first thing, uh, this was a nice package from 
the one and only Ty Lord Stevenson. So he sent me this just a box. There's nothing in here. I needed the box though, and he uh, graciously sent me his. I threw mine away. As you know, I finally have a full Wii U set. We'll be doing videos on that here shortly. Um, but so he sent this to me because I, you know, to have a full set, like I really just, I regret throwing my box away. But then inside the box, he included Resident Evil 2 for the N64. I've never played this version or any of the retro versions. I also have it on the Dreamcast. However, he sent me the N64 one. I'm really curious to try this out because I'm... I, I'm amazed how they fit this onto this cart, but somehow they did. I'm pretty sure this is like the largest game fit onto an N64 cart. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. So that was really cool of him. Another package from another YouTuber. This was a random package. I didn't know this was coming. Uh, this is from Baltimore Retro Gaming. Uh, he sent me two shoot 'em ups for the Dreamcast. So this is Zero Gunner, and then we got uh, Border Down. So he actually printed these out. So there's the fronts and the backs, and this is on like actual photo paper. Because he, um, and there, there's his like little logo thing that he has. Um, and you know, he even, uh, these are burns obviously, but so like he even printed on the disc and stuff. And um, he somehow like American patched Japanese versions. So these will play on American consoles, which is really awesome. Um, and he actually sent me a note, which is in here, John. <laughs> I do always keep the notes, and then there's that. So it's, for me, that, that's another cool thing about having a channel. just getting random presents like this from someone who you know enjoys your content and I've met him personally and it was it was a blast and plan to hang out with him again soon and do some videos with him but um so it was just it was I had a shit eating grin on my face when I saw a package from some guy named John and I was like oh it's John and uh I open it up and I see I see these and I'm like oh okay I, I have a feeling I know what these are and sure enough it was two well pretty much two of the better shoot 'em ups on the Dreamcast that we never got here so big thanks to him for that uh, all right, then we got some PS4 stuff here. Not a lot of stuff here because I'm kind of trying to wean down here. Uh, we got Rhyme 9000, so this is a shoot 'em up limited edition. Really difficult, but it has kind of like a rhythm beat to it, so it's kind of cool. Uh, and then we got uh, Earth Atlas. So this one is really cool looking because it's it's hand drawn. I play both these. Uh, this one's hand drawn. It's kind of um, it reminds me of In the Hunt, which is like a underwater submarine shoot 'em up. So this is literally an underwater sub shoot 'em up kind of game, but it's all hand drawn. All that, the the creatures are all like you know um, octopuses and fish and sharks and that kind of stuff, and uh, it's a really badass game. Very difficult though, but I, I do hope to uh, finish that someday. And then we got two um, two more PS4 games here. We got Hyper Sentinel, which is another shoot 'em up, and then we got a VR game here, which is Neon Wall. Uh, that's from Limited Run, so I had to grab those. And then uh, let's see here, we got. Quite a bit of sh uh, Switch stuff here. So we got Knight Pen Knights of Pen and Paper Deluxe Edition and Knights Pen and Paper 2 Deluxe Deist Edition. So this is from uh, St uh, Super Rare. So that's both of those. This is open. Haven't had time to get down on that yet because of the move. Uh, Katamari, I can't remember if I showed this last time. This got pretty rare, but now they did a reprint. So I don't know if it's as rare, but I still wanted it. Roller Coaster Tycoon, this is also a little uncommon, but I don't know how true that is. We got Child of Light Ultimate Edition and then Valiant Hearts The Greatest War. These are both on the cart. I can confirm that. Um, I haven't beat Child of Light ever, but Valiant Hearts is one of my favorite games of the last like decade. Really hidden gem, tearjerker, emotional ride of a, of a game that you'll play. Uh, you play, there's the woman, she's a medic, then there's like a black, big buff army guy. And then there's um, like a kind of like a hillbilly American guy, and then there's like a, a German guy, and then there's a dog. So the dog is the medic dog, and then the, the lady's like a medic lady. But you st you play like each one of their stories, and they all meet and intertwine, and it's just such a great adventure. Um, it's kind of Metroidvania in a sense because you have to find stuff and then use like a stick of dynamite to blow up like a you know a column and. It's a really, just a really great game, and, and both of these were actually made by the Far Cry teams, so I'd like to see them do some kind of, you know, third game in the sense of like a hand-drawn style, because these are both hand-drawn. Can't recommend this one enough. So, previously, Child of Light was only available physically on the Vita, which I have. Now, Valiant Hearts is only physically on the Switch, so Child of Light is Vita and Switch, and then Valiant Hearts is Switch only physically. However, both of them are available on pretty much any system of the last 10 years. Uh, then we got Remy Lore, Lost Girl in the Lands of Lore. So this is an Icalis release. 
and uh, that comes with you know a little bonus extra and the the uh, guidebook that they always give you or the little instruction booklet. Sometimes it's a comic book, sometimes it's what have you. And then I got uh, Super Meat Boy from Best Buy. Limited run games for the Switch. I would hold out on them if you have GCU because they keep sending them over and letting you buy them from Best Buy. So I got this for like 22 bucks versus the 30. Kind of makes sense to just get it for the 22 bucks. I don't give a shit what color, what the cover looks like as long as I get the game physically, which I might uh, definitely pick this up because it's super fun. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, 22 bucks for a limited run game that you can get in Best Buy. Currently, you can get Meat Boy, Ukulele. Um, what was the other one? Windjammers is coming, and then something else. And it, they they just keep putting the big the big releases at Best Buy, and you can get with the GCU. So it just to me, it just makes more sense to do it that way. Now here's my first Kickstarter game that I ever did, and uh, it finally came in, and I'm actually in the manual, which is really cool. There's about a hundred people listed in the manual. Mine says Dat Game Collector in the manual, and I'm, it's really cool to to see that. This is uh, Nebs and Debs. Hopefully the light's not too shiny on that. Oh, there we go. Uh, so there's that. Uh, I do plan, uh, MC Murr, when I took a picture and showed it on Twitter, really wanted me to stream this. So once I get everything set up, I'm going to try to do a full playthrough of this. Very tough game. Uh, I played through about the first two levels. It's got 12 stages total. It's a platformer game. Uh, you, it's almost like Mario in a sense, but so you play this little girl. Which I guess she's maybe an adult. I don't know, but she's got an octopus attached to her head, and you got to collect gems and stuff. And it's a very simplistic NES platformer, but the music in the game, awesome. Cannot wait to stream this for you guys. It's a really cool game. Uh, definitely pretty limited because it was a Kickstarter game, but if you can find this, I definitely recommend it. And the last pickup here is... Finally bought Starlink for the Switch. Only reason I got it for the Switch was because of the Star Fox. Uh, and then that's it. That's it for the pickups, guys. Um, from here on out, the pickups are probably going to be less because, as I said, I need to get a new car. So I either need to be saving up money to get another car or buy whatever. I need to be doing something. So I, the game funds need to kind of go down a lot. And I actually recently just sold all, not all, but basically anything in my Xbox One collection that was not a console exclusive got sold to GameStop. Any multiplat for the PS4 got sold to GameStop. Uh, the reason I did that was because A, they were giving away 30% extra trading credit, and B, because um, none of those games are actually on the disc. In 10 years from now, 5 years from now, you're not going to be able to download the patches to play those. All those games have day one patches, and I made sure before I sold them all. And I'm not talking like a 500 or less megabyte patch where it's probably just something stupid to... to you know, a texture that's messed up. I'm talking like 8 to 20 gigabyte patches. That game is fucked without that day one update. So there's no point in keeping the disc. So I took an opportunity to get the extra trading credit. And the reason I did that is because I'm, I'm going to use, I got $314 and like 75 cents. So not too bad for about 60 games. Uh, definitely more than I thought. I was kind of, I, I made a bet with some of the YouTube boys and I was like, it'll be about 200. It was 315. So not bad. I'm going to use all that money. Actually, I did buy Starlink, but this was 30 so down to like 280 something um, But I'm going to use all that money toward a PS5, and then once PS5 comes out, that's probably going to be my... I'm only going to get a PS5. Cause, and then we'll, we'll, the reason for that is because I, I'm going to want the PSVR 2. I know that, and I'm going to want to play all the um, Sony exclusives. I already know that, right? So with that being said... Um, I'm going full digital next gen. There's just no point in getting physical copies anymore. There's just there really just isn't. Uh, I mean, hell, some of the Libid and Red shit. As soon as you put it in, there's a fucking one or two four gigabyte update. The game ain't on the disc. There's just no point in owning them. There just really isn't. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I feel about that. And then um, I know that I always said I wouldn't do news stories, but it, I, I kind of want to start touching on some of them, not all of them, but in the future, that's definitely going to be. Um, somewhere the channel leans towards, and I, I want to discuss a couple of them now. Um, Game Pass going to Switch. Is that a cool thing? Is it going to happen? Is it a rumor? It's still a rumor at this current time, so don't think that that's confirmed yet. Most of those big uh, clickbait channels will have you believe that it's confirmed already. It's not. Um, is that cool? Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. Don't get me wrong. Um, it's really only going to work well if you're in dock mode and have the LAN adapter connected to an Ethernet cord, and if you have, I'd say, a steady 20 megabyte internet or more, it'll work well. Uh, I've used PlayStation Now. It's um, not terrible. This was when I still lived at home, so we're talking three years ago, give or take. 
uh, home by my parents is what I mean. And they had okay internet. It was like 50 megabytes uh, Verizon Fios. So it was okay. But honestly, you know, the, the PS3 games were lagging on a PS3. So, you know, that's not really great. But, uh, you know, that's... And the, and the thing with that is, is PlayStation owns Gaikai, which was literally a streaming service that they bought out to make PlayStation Now for them. So you would assume that they would be able to get the streaming stuff down pat. Now, granted, that was a couple years ago. I haven't tried it in a while. Uh, when PS5 comes out, I'll probably sign up for it, to be honest with you. Um, now, the uh, as far as the Game Pass on the Switch, I think it'll be a cool idea, but that further just drives that nail into the Xbox coffin. Um, Xbox is totally just trying to ditch their hardware. Don't be fooled by it. Um, supposedly, they're going to come out with two SKUs next gen. Um, I do believe that they're going to be announced this year. I think one's Anaconda and one's Condor or something like that. Uh, I think they will be announced this year. Uh, I think that we might honestly see them. I want to. This is going to sound weird, but Nintendo proved you could do a spring launch and be successful. So. Personally, I think Xbox and PlayStation will probably do spring launches next year, uh, 2020. Um, however, I think PlayStation is going to follow up Xbox to see what missteps that they take so that they can maintain their dominance that they have right now, uh, which I full and well believe, and this is not me being a Sony fanboy because, truthfully, I'm more of a Nintendo fanboy than anything, although everybody thinks I'm an Xbox fanboy. But... Um, I think that the PlayStation 5 is going to be more powerful uh, in the sense that it's going to have to be because if they if they want these VR titles and they really and some of the higher up people in Sony have been quoted as saying that the PS5 is really going to be VR heavy and I'm cool with that because I'm loving some PlayStation VR it's great but a lot of the games are muddy and they just don't look great but I wanted to see VR evolve so you need to put your money where your mouth is. If you want that product, you need to support the product. So with that being said, I have PSVR 2.0, but I, the second iteration of the first one. But uh, I think PSVR 2, the actual PSVR 2, will be great. And I think that the PS5 is going to have to be very powerful for it to put out good visuals. Uh, the further we've gotten into the PlayStation VR um, life, we're about two years in now, uh, we've we've definitely seen some bigger, higher budget things like Moss um, and uh, Astrobot is two really great games I really enjoyed. Um, they're higher quality. There's there's more beef to them. There's more meat to the levels. They're bigger. They're badder. They look like Astrobot to me is one of the better looking PSVR games, just in the sense that there's no jaggies. The textures aren't muddy. So they're finally figuring out how to. I guess make each eye look better and all that stuff, but I mean, at this point in time, PS4 is pretty much dead. Um, so as far as current or next gen plans for me go, I'm just going to build a beefy PC. I'm going to keep my Switch obviously, and then I'm going to get my PS5 and um, going all digital with the PC and all digital with the PS5. Uh, Switch, I'll continue to get physicals, but I'm not going to buy the games that say download required on the top because again, there's just no point in buying that game physically because unless you just really want to hunk a plastic on your shelf that serves no purpose and no hating if you want to do that but to me it just seems kind of stupid um, so yeah I don't know collecting is weird uh, collecting in the future is going to be really weird how is it going to affect the retro market is kind of something I would like to talk about in greater detail but we'll talk about it briefly here for a second I think that people will start to realize and I, I can't be the only one realizing that these games aren't on the disc I think people will start to realize that more and more and like your casual gamers will start to realize it and then all those you know sales are going to become digital and then next gen personally I, I think that with the I think the Anaconda is going to be the rumored stronger one and the Condor is like equivalent to just the X that's out now I think the X equivalent one will be just a straight up digital box and then I think the Condor one might have you know a Blu-ray player in it but at that point, like you're already streaming all your movies from Netflix or Hulu or where, what have you, or uh, Amazon Prime. So I mean, Blu-rays, physical movies, like there's just no point in those either. That everything's going digital, and it kind of sucks. But I mean, you have, you have to adapt with the with the way technology is going, and it sucks. But I just owning all this physical stuff. I mean, packing up all my games. I, I would love to show this to you. You can see this box kind of. I have six, twelve. Uh, terrible at math. <laughs> um, 18. 18 of these. 
full of boxes or full of games. Um, that's terrible. I it's a lot of shit. So as soon as I move in, I'm I'm fully. I'm just getting rid of a lot of shit just because. It's just too much, man. Like um, it's just too much. And I've already gotten rid of so much stuff this year. I've gotten rid of. Uh, I was talking to um, a buddy of mine. His name's Shocky. He, he doesn't have a channel, but he's pretty active in all of our channels. Um, you know. He was talking about buying, you know, duplicate consoles, and I was just like, dude, there's really just no point. Like, if if you own two Saturns, like, what's the point? If if your one Saturn breaks, then buy a new one. Like, owning two, to, I mean, this is all just personal opinion. So I, I, I wiped out all my consoles that had duplicates because there's just no point. Like, if I make enough money to where if my PS1 breaks, then I'm just going to buy another one. I don't need to own two of them, you know? Uh, at one point, I had a Destiny 1 PS4, then I had the gold PS4 Slim, and then I have the PS4 Pro now, the white one all white. I sold the gold and the white one because it was just like, I don't need three PS4s. It's just stupid. And then I had uh, the Halo 5 Xbox and I had the Gears 4 Xbox and then I had the Project Scorpio. I sold the Gears and the Halo Xbox because there's just no point. They were just sitting in a box. Like, I only need one console, so obviously I'm going to pick the better ones. Um, and, you know, I, I got decent cash off Craigslist for those two consoles and I hope the new owners are very happy with their mint condition consoles that they got. Uh, a couple of them tried to uh, really cheat me out on the price. I'm like, dude, you see this box is pristine and it has all the baggies and twisty ties in it. And I was like, this is like factory fresh, my man. And he would, yeah. but another story. That would be another, I mean, there, I have so many video ideas that I've always wanted to do, but I've never been able to do them while living where I'm living because I guess to briefly talk about it, there's two dogs here that never shut up. Uh, there's a daughter who's very loud. I live in a basement currently. Um, and you know they're always home all the time so pe you know some people might think it's weird to record videos so like I don't want them knowing that I'm doing that in their basement and, you know it's just it's never been ideal for me uh, it was it was a life lesson well learned um, don't ever rent a basement that is a life lesson I can give you um, it's just really not worth it because it's very loud um, and yeah so that's kind of what's been going on with my life if over the last like few months I'm sure you guys have been able to tell that I was kind of depressed and kind of anxious all the time and just not putting out a lot of content that's why and trust me there's literally dozens of other issues that have happened here but I'm not going to go into the nitty and gritty of that but um, I, I do appreciate everyone sticking around and uh, like I said the content's going to keep rolling I literally have a uh, you know those weird composite notebooks that you would get like when you were in school? I still had two of them from when I was in high school that never got used in my desk. So I've just been jotting down video ideas and there's literally like four pages of just, you know, ideas of videos. So like I have tons of shit planned out. I just haven't been able to do it, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that's just like a quick update on games and what's going on with the life and uh, just talking about some of the current rumors that are going on and I don't think Game Pass is going to come to the Switch. I, personally, I don't. Um, if it does, you'll have you're going to have to. You could play it on the handheld, but then it's going to be on Wi-Fi and it's just going to be laggy and, and you know all that stuff's cool and all. But as far as owning the Xbox Next Generation, there's no point. If that does, if Game Pass does come to the Switch, and then all those games are playable on PC, um, there's just no point in owning the Xbox. I'm sorry, but there just isn't because. If you're going to be able to stream Game Pass on the Switch, you're going to be able to stream Game Pass on PC, which means you'll be able to stream it on a shitty $300 Dell. And at that point, if you buy a shitty little laptop, you can use that for homework, paying bills, you can use it for everything, and you can play your Xbox games on it. And all your Steam games, you can probably play it on like low settings. So, I mean, at that point, there's just no point in owning the Xbox. And this is coming from someone who owns... Over 500 Xbox physical games between original and 360, all of them are exclusive, of course, but, and those are actually on the disc. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it kind of hurts me that the Xbox has gone this way, and they're leading the charge for the all-digital future, but I mean, are we that naive to not have seen it coming? I mean, they tried to make it happen with the Xbox One, and then everybody kind of like swept it under the rug and forgot about it, but like, you already know they're going to do it again next gen, like, it's slowly been creeping in. Don't think, okay, so this is going to come as a little bit of a shocker to people, but your disc, being that you have to still put it in, even though you download it to your hard drive, is a DRM. With that being said, each Xbox disc is individually serial numbered, and most people don't know that. Like, you could have five crackdowns, each one has a different serial number on it. 
Um, I don't know why they did that. That had something to do with the original plan of not letting people be able to trade shit in and this and that. But they just kind of kept it on the disc. Not a lot of people know that. I don't know if it's the laser, le uh, the laser reads it or if it's physically written on the disc. I'm not sure. But uh, and then PS4, it doesn't have that, but it's still a DRM because you got to put the disc in, and then it reads it from the disc. But um, yeah, I, I I don't know. Like all this shit just irritates me. Like I just want to put my game in. Like the good old days of gaming. To me, the sixth generation of gaming was the peak of gaming. The sixth generation of gaming was like the the Toyota Supra of the 90s. It was the peak of sports cars, Japanese sports cars. It was the peak. That and the R34 Skyline. It was the peak of awesome cars, right? And then they, you know, they're still okay now, but they're not great, right? But, like, hopefully this all makes sense. It's a terrible analogy. Unless you're a car guy, you would understand. But, like, I don't know. I'm just kind of rambling. Old school DGC, if you remember all the rambles I used to do. But, I haven't made a video in a little while, so this is... Oh, shit, this is 26 minutes already. <laughs> <coughs> oh. uh, let me know if you made it by to the end of this video by telling me your favorite pizza topping, as always. Uh, just something stupid I always say at the end if I ramble on. Um, but yeah, I, I'm definitely excited to be able to finally be able to do videos again. Um, there's no thumbnail on this. Why is that? Photoshop finally cracked down on me, and they, they, they axed my uh, free Photoshop I had, so gonna have to figure out a way to get thumbnails again so as always peace out for now guys till next come here you mother I'm a... <sighs>